Hello everyone. I Varun Agarwal welcome you all to another web panel discussion organized by ETCIO in partnership with Tata Communications. Today's topic of discussion is portrait of a new work life. The new normal often spoken about is a lot more than just working from home. Everything in a workplace is set to transform as employees start to return to work. Maintaining social distancing and tracking human movement is going to be two of the biggest challenges. Be it a retailer who will have to evolve themselves into e-retailers and tackle new purchase behaviors or a factory shop floor which has to be redesigned for keeping social distancing in mind. What binds all of them together? The power of technology, a game changer amidst the rapidly shifting business paradigm. So in this discussion today, uh, we will talk about the role of technology in this new paradigm of work life. So before we begin, let me uh, remind you that we would be taking questions during this discussion. So you can just tweet your questions to either of the panelists and we would respond uh, immediately. So without further ado, let me introduce uh, to our today's panelists. Our first panelist of the day is A. Balaji, who is the global CIO at UPL Limited. Welcome, Mr. Balaji. Thank you. Our second speaker of the day is Rajar Shri Purkayastha, who is the head pre-sales India and Mecca at Tata Communications. Welcome, Raj. Thanks, Varun. So before we get into the discussion, uh, Raj has a quick presentation to share with us uh, to just set the context. Over to you, Raj. Thank you, Varun. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, give a quick one which will... Uh, which should, by the way, uh, set a context as, as Varun just mentioned, which talks about the next phase of, uh, you know, what we should be looking at from uh, the response to pandemic per se. So, uh, you know, we've spoken about work from home a lot. Uh, today, we're going to focus on going back to work uh, and uh, which, which is the logical next step when you look at uh, the pandemic situation and the response to it as we have seen till now and from that perspective today's session is not not only going to be uh, interesting for the IT leaders but also for HR uh, managers and and for the office leaders per se or the office managers per se so without further ado I'm going to uh, go into the dive into the presentation and uh, I'm hoping that you'd find value in, in what you have to share. So as I was saying that, you know, work from home uh, has been the topic of discussion for the last three months. But uh, recently, a new discussion has started, which is going back to work. Now, when you think about going back to work, there are multiple things that you need to think about, specifically in terms of who stays back, who goes back to work, what is the percentage of people who will go back to work. And in that entire scenario, uh, what kind of health and safety measures you're going to take to ensure that the employees who are going back to work is safe enough. And two, everyone is on the same standards per se when it comes to office architecture or the way technology is available at home or at office, right? If you keep all these things in mind, there are four things which are, which are on the top of all the CEOs or CXOs, uh, you know, topic at this point. Uh, which are contactless workplace, frequented tools, virtual uh, engagements, and last but not the least, how do you digitize the entire value chain? We are going to touch upon all these uh, four items very quickly, but uh, you know, if you are looking at either of them and you have ideas, questions, or even uh, you know, some inputs back to us, we'll be more than happy to listen to them. So let's look at contactless first. Uh, but before that, we need to think about the day in a life for different persona when workplaces are going to uh, open up, right? And, and you'll have to think about uh, personas in terms of your own office, whether it's a shop floor uh, persona who is going to have a different way of looking at the shop floor than what he did earlier to the work from home employee. See, right now, everybody is working from home, but then if a percentage of people uh, goes back to uh, office and they are having a bit of fun there and, and free coffee, uh, I'm sure uh, you know the work from home employees will also have to look at things a bit differently, right? And of course, uh, 
very importantly, your prospective customers. How are they going to look at the new world uh, and the new uh, reality per se when things open up? So let's look at contactless first, right? When when you think about uh, you know uh, contactless, it starts from entry and exit. So uh, you know, starting from uh, whether you're going to get an entry without sanitizing, without wearing mask, uh, contactless doors, or even your customers or visitors coming in, uh, what needs to be done? Now, here we believe that IoT is going to play a very, very key role, right? Specifically to ensure that, you know, you maintain that, that hygiene which is required. You do not allow people who are not really in the right temperature and therefore sick and so on and so forth. Uh, when you think about cafeteria, when you think about uh, elevators or common areas where people are going to come in, where you need to enforce uh, social distancing, there again, IoT is going to play a very key role in terms of ensuring that people do not meld together, uh, workplace, uh, you know, uh, distancing is maintained, specifically in, in areas like cafeterias where, you know, a lot of people may actually walk in during the lunchtime. Uh, there, a combination of IoT and scheduling will actually help companies to ensure that overcrowding doesn't happen at any point of time. The next one would be collaboration. Now, uh, collaboration is what we are doing at this point of time, but this collaboration is 5 to 10% of what collaboration should be offering to you. Now, think about a scenario where uh, you've gone back to office and your colleague is still sitting at home. How do you do ubiquitous collaboration between both of you uh, in a scenario where, you know, you may have much more tools to offer, say, a smart room at, at the office, whereas the employee who is sitting in a home uh, does not have those tools. In that case, you know, how can digital help, how can ubiquitous collaboration platform help to bring employees together in a manner where, uh, at the end of the day, the productivity of the organization goes up tremendously, right? The next one is Figital. Now, this is something that has been in works for a long time now, and I'm sure Mr. Balaji will have a lot of things to add in this, specifically when you think about a shop floor and how uh, machine, human, and technology comes together. Now, let me give you an example of why this is, this is becoming extremely important, and specifically from an India context. India has around uh, 140 to 150 million migration yeah. labels. Now, I'm sure you've read about it. Or what's the situation of migration uh, uh, labors per se? Uh, they are all migrating back, right? Uh, now, in that scenario, uh, you have to also understand that all those labors are actually trained uh, on a very high level uh, for machines or the processes that they used to work at. Uh, one of my CIO friends uh, actually shared that uh, the labors in his uh, production shop floor actually even knew how to do PLC programming. Uh, now, since you've lost that labor, because that labor has gone back home uh, and you have to get somebody else, uh, can you really afford the time you lose in training? And then again, the risk of losing the same trained labor again is something that will uh, mull over everybody's uh, mind. This is where uh, you know a combination of human technology and machine will come in, uh, wherein the Reliance on human uh, will will actually be reduced with with what has been learned by the production shop floor, and that's where Figital will will uh, play a very important role. And I'll ask Mr. Balaji to kind of share his uh, perspective once we go into the discussions per se. That will be my question to him. Customers would be obviously very important. Now, as a customer, uh, the top of the mind is always engagement and experience. Uh, now, when you think about engagement and experience, we have to also understand that the in-person engagements will go down, right? The physical touch is going to go down, remote is going to go up, digital is going to go up. So how do you uh, ensure that you give the same personal touch back to your customers uh, without doing the physical touch is what we need to think about. And that's where digitizing the sales cycle comes into play. Now, since customer is is uh, you know bread and butter for everybody, we thought that we'll keep a few slides to kind of tell you that you know what can you expect uh, when you think about digitizing. Now, think about retail, right? Think about a, a large retail chain which sells uh, white goods. And now, in that case, if I tell you what I do, uh, if I want to buy a white good like a TV or a fridge, 
uh, or uh, you know it's it's the warm season so you know uh, the ac then the first thing i do is i'll go to the website check out the new new products which is there to offer uh, once i like a product i kind of say that okay i want to buy this this tonnage this product then i go to a showroom to see that product now while i still know that you know that product is uh, you know what i see is a dummy one i can't really uh, you know, do anything with it i still want to see that product i want to talk to the sales person out there i i want to ask 20 questions and then uh, you know i'll i'll come back uh, and decide either the shop floor itself or come back discuss with the family decide and buy uh, now in the new uh, normal this may not be true because you know you are no longer going to the shop to do all those things so what what do you do in this scenario what you do is once you do the uh, you know browsing on the aggregation site uh, rather than going to the shop you can actually uh, do a video call with the sales rep where you uh, you know book a time with the sales rep and do that video call and once that call is done uh, where the sales rep explains everything does a high quality video uh, you know demo to you then you uh, you do the next step in terms of either deciding it at that point of time or going and visiting the physical shop by taking an appointment or doing the payment uh, you know on digital means at that moment itself and then uh, you know getting the good at your house house right you may think that this is something that you can obviously do on amazon you've been doing it uh, a lot so what's new in this uh let's talk about you know uh, you buying a car or you in auto in that case right same journey but then in auto one thing that to understand is that the sales journey is bit more complex and the life cycle management of the customer also comes into play because you know when you buy a car you actually shake hands with the OEM for 5 to 10 years till the time you're going to keep the car so for that customer the engagement starts from uh, the customer searching in the aggregation site for the cars then doing uh, going to the showroom uh, doing a test drive uh, then buying the car and then uh, you know life cycle management now in all these things like what you saw in the white good uh, segment you know it's possible to digitize the sales cycle now you may think that you know this is something that i'm talking about from a very bookish knowledge perspective but uh, let me share with you this is this is exactly what we are delivering for a retail major and an auto major where uh, you'd soon see uh, this kind of an engagement coming in where it will be a combination of digital plus physical with a very very different experience for customers right it's going to also change the way you know customers would like uh, companies to engage per se just two examples there are multiple other things that we are doing and can be done that was from one specific you know value chain per se if you think about the entire value chain for manufacturing it's extremely complex there are production cycle there is resource and procurement cycle there is production there is logistics and then there is sales and service for example you know what i talked about from an auto perspective was only the sales and service which is the last step in the entire journey per se uh if you think about manufacturing again you know a lot of manufacturers would be there on this uh, call today you agree with me that you know from a ford auto when you talk about industry ford auto the main focus was actually on production right and maybe a bit on logistics uh not a lot of focus went into uh, how things can be done differently in r and d and design how things can be done differently in sourcing and then warehousing and so on and so forth most of the focus went into how you know production can be done in a seamless manner uh, robotics can come in and therefore a, a journey towards ford auto when you think about the entire cycle per se and how, what digital can can do for you i'm sure you already know that but then one of the mistakes that we see uh, people doing is that they are doing it in bits and chunks right which at the end of the day also means that things do not work together seamlessly you know there's a issue when things needs to come together in a seamless manner and therefore it's extremely important that you have a blueprint which goes across uh, why you may choose to deploy things you know once in a while right or or uh, you know uh, one part at a time per se so uh, you know to do all these things what do you need do you need a product or a partner or an expert 
there, there is a raging debate on this, and maybe Mr. Balaji can talk about this in a in a in a, in a different manner or a different lens per se. But what I believe is that you know you are a, you are unique, right? And and since you are unique, the solutions that you require is also unique. And from that perspective, why you may have uh, the option of buying a product, uh, the product will not an off-the-shelf product will never ever be uh, you know absolutely mapped to your business requirements per se. A partner is somebody who you know who is there for you. But then the way I look at it is uh, you know you need an expert right who is more than a partner, uh, if somebody who understands your business ecosystem and that's an expert and can marry the products and services which is available in the market with your exact requirements so that you get a solution which works for you. And that's where somebody like us comes in, where we talk about our four pillars, uh, you know, in terms of starting from borderless networks to productive collaboration, to the ubiquitous security and design and uh, on, on compute. Now, when I talk about borderless, you know, I, I'm not meaning that, you know, crossing international borders only. When I talk about borderless, I mean that, you know, it, you need some, some agility in your network, which can allow you to launch new products. Uh, which can allow you to go to new customer sets without doing a lot of things on your network. That's borderless, right? You can, you have to allow the network to actually go to anybody and everybody, whether it is partners, it's customers, it's more employees, to ensure that productive collaboration also comes into play with the security layer, which is ubiquitous and doesn't need to be looked at, you know, every day per se. And driving over compute wherein you're not pay paying through your nose for traffic, uh, you know, just for one uh, more uh, service, your traffic goes up uh, and, and you're paying like you're a bill shop. Those kind of things uh, should not happen. You know, you have to have an optimal layer of IT infrastructure, which helps you go into the digital journey and uh, back to your digital uh, transformation uh, uh, in a journey as soon as possible. With that, I'm going to hand it over back to you, Varun. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Raj. That was an interesting presentation. And one of the things I was noticing was when you started, you know, uh, the portrait that you made, it actually looked very futuristic. You, you know, a lot of presentations we used to see uh, five, ten years back would have this kind of a map, but it was all futuristic. But now it's all uh, coming true. I mean, it's exactly. something we are seeing getting implemented. So, uh, you know, we had some perspective from you. Let me... Uh, Ask uh, Mr. Balaji. Mr. Balaji, we saw the future of uh, workplace, uh, so to say, uh, that uh, Raj portrayed. How do you uh, really envisage a uh, workplace at your organization? Because uh, many manufacturing organizations don't really uh, spend much on technology uh, when it comes to the shop floor, especially IT. Um, but going forward, it doesn't look like an option. So what is your view on this? Yeah, um, before that, I want to you know, step back and then make the audience aware of the entire ecosystem that we are in, right? And if I want to put a two by two matrix of saying known and unknown, and uh, two by two saying that at one end you put COVID, at the other end you put all the business problems or the country problems that we are talking about. Now, we are in a situation, if there is a known problem, like the way that we have been discussing on, okay, work from home, is, is a sort of known problem and we need to we need to resolve that okay how will you improve the bandwidth what are the ways and then what is the mechanism how do we maintain the social distancing that is a known problem and there is some sort of a technological solutions uh, in the known way right there are some unknown problem you know covid poses new new challenges every day we don't know what all things is going to come there are many many new changes and also there are many new unknown challenges even within the government today we are hearing uh, recently on the COVID, I mean, Kuwait has their own country law and then you are, you are getting into some European as their own country law. You don't know what all the so many changes that is also happening across the organization. The world is so dynamic when things are moving. What is really adding fire to the fuel is there is an unknown, unknown element, which means in both the cases, we don't know what is going to happen on, but we need to be ready for that. I think that is where the today modern day managers have been post uh, the threat on this whole journey. So this unknown unknown element that we are in and to do that unknown unknown, yes, we can discuss about what are the possibilities in manufacturing, what are the possibilities in offices, what are the things on this, but there are many 
element still another thing there is some sort of a uh, situation where in the the tsunami is is even settling the after effects are still happening and and you know more new new problems are really you know coming out on that particular type of situations you cannot put a global framework and then decide this is the way that we are going to work on this because everything is moving object as we speak on this i think that's something that i want to put a perspective before we are you know uh, getting into it in that unknown unknown element that we are talking about what is the need of the aware is which we do not have control over any of the situation is need of the aware is situational leadership okay what is that situation that we are in and how we are going to go with that leadership process is what that we need to really look at rather than getting into the context of okay this is my known problem this is my known solution let us go on this okay that's something which is which is good to have but we need to be mindful of otherwise you know there is always a risk new terminology is being formed as covid yet right we should not we should not end up in those in those zone of covid yet that we are really you know talking about we need to be we need to be mindful of those unknown and then still there are many things unknown there are many uh, new situations are really coming up but what is really positive coming out is adoption of new technologies i think we you know this is the best time for any it professionals like me to be in the situations right we straight away moved from important to vital okay i think that's the shift that we, we have already talked about so many times if things are not going to be in the way and then the entire thing is a moving object the only way to connect those moving object is technology i think let us face it how you are going to go about connecting that technology what is the way to go about the connecting the technology there can be always a point of opinion views and the new technologies are emerging how we are going to go about and we are still not sure how long we are going to really talk about this some optimists say that it is 6 months some people pessimists say that it is 18 to 24 months we we don't know what is what is the thing that we are talking about but still we need to address the problem we also need to take that and things has to move on and we need to finalize the way and then show the human resilience of whatever we are talking about okay if this is the situation that we are in how you are going to face the situation what are all the ways and means that we are going to address that i think that's the crux of the story right before i am getting into you know which is the thing what is the model and how you are going to go but yes i do have my own point of view but let us understand this big picture before you know uh, getting into these uh, minute cases of this that's what i thought i should first share that point number 1 point number 2 when it comes to the technology adoption um, gone are the days where people are saying that manufacturing are the latest adop- i mean late in the adoptions on this i don't think anyone who can afford to say those type of things in the current day context on this right i think whether we can take or not take is is a different thing then then is a choice between whether you want to succeed or you want to fail i think that's the trade off that we are talking about right situation is same for everyone how differently you are going to use it and how better that you are going to connect with your customer is going to differentiate you and thereby you are going to be the you know differential in that you now typically in this type of scenario for the same industry you have seen a graph saying that some mediocre performer and some see to performer when the graph goes like this what is the difference is the adoption of technology that's what i could see that how you are using that to the fullest advantage of our own situations and the taking on this so which means the business case drives that adoptions right 6 to 9 months before we were all to- talking about the same you know the virtual meets and how we are going to go but how do we improve the adoption on this particular organization what all the ways and means that we are going to go about now we don't have a choice on this the type of meeting 20000 30000 meetings are happening every day for any organization of our size is happening and across the globe things are happening you are connecting to the farmers connecting to distributors connecting to dealers that we are talking about and and when when we are zone of connecting and they are also responding you know there were times where we were wondering whether farmers will really respond to us when we are really getting into this digital or is it only digital is only for an organization etc but the reality says yes they are also willing to accept what all this stuff we do have a case study where we can go and show the plot of what is really happening in the plot how the product is growing what are all the stuffs that can be there and how this can be you know demonstrated in agriculture and what is the differential that we are bringing into the table and what is the research that we are talking about those type of things new new business cases are evolving as i said there are many unknown unknown element is there we are also finalizing some innovative way of resolving can i use some products like grow gopro and then taking it to the field can i use some product in the uh, manufacturing where we can look at the temperature i can look at the social distancing can i look at something on the uh manufacturing process side wherein wherein we can look at okay can this process be addressed from the distance and these are all these are all the 
uh, possibilities that, that we are exploring. Let's also step back and then be realistic in the ground scenario of what we are talking about. Today is the world where people are pretty skeptical. They are not sure of how things are going to be there. You are also seeing a lot of people are uh, really sent out as some story sharing. These people are reducing this number of people, et cetera, et cetera. Here is an opportunity for us. Okay, can I start looking at those people as my extended enterprise? Can I start looking at those persons as my extended enterprise in such a way that can I do a sort of platform orientation within ourselves so that I can do my cost of operation much more lesser? Today, I have an abundance in surplus when it comes to the resource side of it. Can I take advantage of that, those type of things? Can I take those people connecting directly to a pointed problem? problem and get it resolved to the lowest possible thing, which I would have never dreamt of in my uh, in my overall scenario of things that we are talking about. There are many, many changes are happening. We need to be mindful when we are really looking at how this downturn is happening. There is an upturn within every downturn that we are talking about. And where is that upturn that we can really pick up those type of minute processes and how we can combine this technology orientation so that we are able to achieve this in much more better way. So these are all the running commentaries, right? These are all the ways that dynamically that we need to really go on changing. And then as we speak, we need to finalize some building the blocks and then say this, okay, these are the solution that you can go through and now go through this. And you may find some problem. You may fail some places. Okay, you come back and then assess situation and then move further. Those type of agile process is what is required. So which means the need of the hour, which is well within our circle of influence is the situational leadership, right? And that is what I'm talking about. So you cannot go and then say, okay, this is my policy globally, you need to work towards it and then get this type of You can at the maximum give the framework, you can at the maximum give the governance cells and give them the local empowerment, how it's going to happen on and thereby you empower them within that framework, within that governance limit, and then try to identify the solutioning at that particular place. What is the best fit for that particular slot? How we can go about those type of facilitation is really required rather than getting into a simple thing. Okay, this is what the as an organization do. These are all the tick marks that we can go on and implement on. That. You understood? This is this is the process that we are in, and uh, you know, it's in a way a fascinating time. It's in a way a lot of learning time. It makes us very humble. It also makes us a lot to learn in this whole process. But it's in a way it's a wonderful opportunity for us to look at. Okay, what is the best thing that can happen in this? I think it's a combination that we are in that and. We are in the best time to experience in that context. That's what I could think of. So well, that's uh, very well articulated. In fact, uh, you know, when Raj was putting things out uh, uh, and I said that it might look futuristic, you're saying there are certain things that, you know, we, we don't even know about. So Raj, if we have to think from that perspective, there are known, there are unknowns. A couple of months back, we were thinking that we are about to reopen, but we are still yeah. in a part of the situation. So yeah. if we have to uh, look at the situation as uh, it is evolving. Is, is there a larger framework that you would recommend uh, to begin with? Because looking at how dynamic the situation is, uh, it may not be uh, right to invest in certain things right now when the situation completely changes. I, I'd go back to uh, a few things that Mr. Balaji just said. Uh, first thing he said is that uh, for you know, while a process and a framework is extremely important. Uh, but many a times I have also seen that, and Mr. Balaji also mentioned, is that technology makes a lot of difference in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the leaders and the laggards, right? Uh, when you think about technology, uh, the reason why it, it kind of uh, differentiates between laggards and, and the leaders is because uh, technology has a unique uh, way of bringing people on the same platform. So, for example, uh, the the IT infrastructure or or what you were enjoying in office, uh, you know, in March when you are in office, I can uh, hazard a guess that you are enjoying the same thing sitting in at home also with similar experience, if not the same, based on how good your broadband is. Uh, so from that perspective, at least for the knowledge workers, uh, you know, I'd say that nothing has really changed except for the working hours, which I'm sure has gone up for everybody. Uh, for the people who are on the shop floor, who needs to go back to uh, the shop floor, who, who doesn't have an option of working from home, who are not the knowledge workers, that's where the call needs to be taken. Now, 
what i also understand is the government has has taken some calls right so for example upl uh, i believe falls under uh, the essential services uh, sector and therefore they have been open and uh, you know production from that perspective has been open right so if you think about the entire scenario there'll be some production which which will open up going forward uh, there'll be some production which will uh, you know take some time to open up uh, and some production which is already open now given that scenario uh, i'm sure uh, you know mr balaji had taken a call that all his knowledge workers will stay back at home whereas uh, the factory workers goes needs to go back right and, and that will constitute around 50% of the population uh, at the minimum and that's what government has also allowed uh, companies to do and that is what i believe will be the near future right where uh, 50% of the people will be working at the office 50% will be working from home you know 30 to 40, 50% will be working from home uh, how to bring everybody on the same page uh, in terms of the it infrastructure or uh, except for the coffee machine and the coffee everybody needs to be on the same page that's where you know uh, as as mr balaji was saying right technology is going to play a role where uh, you know people will be on the same page in terms of whether you're talking about the compute or uh, collaboration or security or even uh, you know play games when you're free if you're free so uh, mr balaji do you want to add something on this yeah so yes manufacturing is something you cannot do it from a distance right as in social distancing will not work in the manufacturing so the best choice is that is where this you know uh, and and the situation may be different from each country by itself right it is not it is not that uh, in fact why country it can be state or even for that matter it can be that particular location you know you know the laws are really coming up and suddenly they say that there is a 144 hour our protection is happening in this particular place where you do not have the protection in that place those type of dynamic things are changing right point number 1 point number 2 which is which is a common sensical approach okay if you have a bus for uh, employees or workers to go from here you can you can really look at that okay there is a six members bus now you have to allow only 20 25 people to go in the bus right so that's that's the other thing you maintain that social distance and make them to come on this right ensuring that masks are happening on this in this particular place okay if there is someone who is not in that particular mask to happen you have some tools to identify that and then warn or give an alarm buzz those type of things and then that can be looked at as second option the third option is yes temperature is one of the important criteria i'm still not sure what are all the other criteria of covid is that is that's another changing environment which is happening right we think that people are don't have covid by some test but they have covid and we think that they don't have COVID, i mean they have uh, they don't have a covid but subsequently they become covid employees so it's a it's a uh, you know dynamically changing uh, setup also so what temperature is one of the places where we, they believe that okay if the temperature is consistent and it is going on that you need to ensure that those people have to be looked at in a distance way so here there are distance shooter available to make make those type of things and then you can you can look at and then communicate those type of stuff when it comes to the hardcore manufacturing process yes where where you are really getting into the shop floor yes there is a need for okay if you are running the entire show with say 30 people 40 people for a, a shop floor you need to identify that how how am i going to maintain it with 15 people there you cannot fully avoid the manpower wherein you can fully supplement or support with technology whatever it is possible to you know do that so it is a combination of thing depending on what what industry how we are going to go about can i do a robotic process automation can i do some xyz method to achieve on that particular area so it is not the technology per se it is that business process that we are trying to solve and and your local solutioning for that particular problem can can only be resolved locally and you need to empower your person to see to that that particular thing is addressed right and which is completely different from one of the plant which is in say europe or in uh, other parts of the world in us wherein wherein by design they may even solve it at autonomous vehicles and other stuff can still come on but but maybe much more deeper okay can i use autonomous vehicle for my warehouse to go through and then pick that particular stuff and then resolve this can i reduce that particular portion by using that autonomous vehicle and take that forklift and then move, moving that particular site can this be work for that particular location which is much more better compared to the other places like india where it is pr- predominantly people driven economy even today so it is not one size fits for you need to really look at that okay which country what process what is your problem definition 
okay what are all the technological possibilities and how you can provide the solutioning around it and how will you put that as a framework which component that you are taking how the blocking is you are really going to go but and let us also not forget it is also important some of the aspects like data governance which data can go to what thing there is something like data residency rule you know we we are complex world in that context you cannot take this data to other part of the thing which is very personal data to that particular country and they are very uh, you know focused focused on that particular thing. if you have to take a step back and you know look at how manufacturing used to be done pre march versus how you're looking at it now can you can you explain how the shop floor uh, looks today versus what it used to be it is doing more with less if i want to put philosophically right and and you know we cannot afford we cannot we cannot avoid that particular manufacturing it has to go through this and we are an essential service there is a need for us to re and give that but how we can give this how do we ensure all this work without compromising on some of the fundamentals which includes covid fundamentals i think that's the crux here that we are talking about right so how do we ensure those safety measures are being taken how do we ensure that we are still adequately supplement other people right how do we ensure that we are still following the uh, law of the land which is coming out on the number of sheets and how we are going to go about how do we ensure that okay 24 by 7 uh, shifts how it is going to map, make up on those particular uh, no it is it is not one problem it's a complex integrated interrelated and also people availability and also there is a, there is a particular problems may still come on this there is a particular unit may be there there are some portion of it can be looked at from a distance can i look at that as a piece so there is there is a multiple combinations are possible what we have done is how do we address the issue in such a way that we make a win win for both employee because employee safety is number one criteria for us to go through but at the same time we are still able to still address the probability of what we are talking about okay wherever technology can support or supplement or enable those areas that we try to attempt on that but without compromising on the core ethos that we are talking about i think that's the fundamental difference between what it was before and what it is after i hope you, you got the flavor of what i'm talking about sure sure raj would you like to share some examples from uh, some of the other customers that you work with uh, when it comes to deploying contactless technologies or uh, contact tracing on one hand at the same time uh, making sure that there is social distancing uh, that's maintained by all employees yeah so uh, you know uh, there's a new term which is which is being coined right now which is bc and pc uh, and also dc by the way so bc is before covid during covid and post covid right now if you if you look at uh, uh, pre covid pre covid work from home uh, for uh, almost uh, all all the known organizations uh, was uh, never even thought about uh, so if you if you look at a production facility per se uh, somebody who is in the design uh, organization right uh, or even mr balaji's own shop uh, which is the it and uh, telecom shop they wouldn't be working from home now uh, today i understand that the, this entire shop including the design uh, you know people who are you know working on cat cam kind of you know very heavy designs they are also you know trying to work from home uh, let me also put it because mr balaji also shared that you know they are they are finding it difficult because of the way they have to do things but the people who needs to go back now think about it like this for an employee like uh, uh, like me i am a very different uh, type of employee i am i have a smartphone you know i have laptops i can work from anywhere uh but for somebody who is on the shop floor uh who does not have a smartphone who does not look at the calendar to do his work he goes to a particular machine every day does a set of you know predefined work every day now for that person uh first thing is that uh, you know many companies are doing a shift mechanism wherein you know the person will go once in a while maybe you know uh you know 3 days in a in a week per se that person will go because there is a rotation based work which is happening that's one second is you know now i've been working in the same shop floor for the last 15 years and following you know uh, you know 16 different steps for example okay now there are 10 more steps that i have to add on top of it think about it from an employee perspective now Uh, that's 10 more steps for that particular person who does not really you know go digital that that easy uh, and and you'll have to actually push that employee towards a bit of digital 
So what we are seeing is, uh, you know, specifically as Mr. Balaji was also sharing the other day that in India doing doing contactless, doing social distancing is very very difficult. Because even if you put somebody, you know, an eye card which beeps when you come near somebody else, uh, many people ignore that, uh, right? Or you know, people even ignore when they're going into a dangerous area and and their uh, alarm bells goes off in their eye cards, they even ignore that. Now that's that's a learning cycle which will which will have to be enforced by the leaders and the managers because many a times, you know, what does the uh, you know alarm bell mean? is is unknown to that particular person or the gravity of that is unknown right while he may mean that it means that i'm coming towards somebody else or i'm getting into getting close to a dangerous area the gravity of that is unknown to that particular person because he doesn't really care right what he cares about is those 16 steps now you are telling him to do 15 more steps or 10 more steps he doesn't really want to do that so that's that's what is the change, right? So while uh, you know, as Mr. Balaji also shared, while we have done those kind of things for organizations where you know uh, implementing social distancing methods, you know, giving smart ID cards which can do an alarm uh, when you uh, you know when you come near somebody else or when you approach a dangerous area, all those kind of things we have done. Uh, adoption uh, of that, you know, and what people will think about it. The mind share uh, and the the culture is 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 something that is going to take a bit of time. It it, it cannot be done in two months, and we have been in, in during COVID time is only three months if you think about it. So implementation and then adoption is going to take a bit of time. Mr. Balaji, uh, uh, no, it's a it's a learning curve. Learning curve is something you need to provide some time, right? So and also it's important to what COVID has also pushed us is start looking at everything from zero base. Yeah. Okay, so while you have been there for doing for ages on this, now what is becoming really core and what is non-core is something that COVID is really making us to you know, redefine that, right? Many people claim that they are part of that core is actually not core and many people who are not in not core is becoming core, right? I think this is this very, very thing and that is what this upside down situation has, has really happened, which also means you have an opportunity to look at each and every, you know, compartmental of process and then see this, okay, how much of is this process needs to be carried out at that place and how much of that process can be done from remote, right? And you are going and then bisecting those type of thing, which not only helps you to do a social distancing and making that norms much more better, but also helps you to relook at the work distribution in much more better way and how to go about That is one side of the opportunity before us. The second set of the opportunity is there is a whole set of knowledge workers is now available. Even today, this is, this is all the OEM partners who have given some OEM products. Whenever there is a problem in OEM, they will always ask the people to connect from remote. Right? And then they try to look at from remote and then see what is the problem on this. And even today, it's a normal practice. Now, instead of OEM partner, we are expecting some of the senior employees to try to do this. Right? I think this is the shift, mind shift that we are talking about. We never thought that this opportunity was available even before. Yes, it was available before. OEM partners used to connect those type of things and they try to look at, because many of the plants are in the remotest place. They cannot go and then come and then visit every time. They try to connect through that and identify that particular problem. What is the problem? And then try to do that. There are some many ways of identifying what is the root cause of the thing. And then they try to do a RCA and resolve that particular problem. And these and typically this type of knowledge workers are pretty costly. So they cannot go and then travel from all the way from all those countries to come here. And that's the model we, we have been following it for ages. Now here is the situation, if they can do, why not us, right? What is that activity that you need to really look at that and then, then try to see this, okay, challenge that conventional wisdom of saying, okay, what is that process that you need to physically do? And what is that process you can do it from others? Okay, it's okay to do this. Okay, if it is not okay, why it is not okay? Is it safety or is it some XYZ mechanism or is it law of the land? Or is it security? What is what is that really bothers on this? And then try to identify that and then go and redefine all your Six Sigma principle and then try to see this, okay, how we are going to revisit all this type of stuff. Which one can be looked at now? Which one can be looked at later? And which one needs to be done on, on that place? Which one can be done from remote? How this can you know supplement and coordinate each other's and then try to do this. We are living in a scenario 
to be honest and then people are sending in satellite and they are connecting it from here to satellite and try to do this right so that is also a possibility but we don't apply our mind to use that in the same in manufacturing place and try to do this it's more a mental mindset that we are really talking about how we are really looking at but i'm not saying everything can be done remote there are some issues and it is important to look at those type of an issue for example in our industry we are not allowed to take some of these i uh, know mobile and other things nearest to this because it is also safety and security is so the question of allowing some of these people getting into is not even a, it is zero compromise zone we need to really see to that that we are following it very meticulously and then try to address on this come what may whatever may be the technological possibility it is a need of the hour otherwise you will have your own fatal incidents on this whole process it is no compromise zone when it comes to the safety and security of the people you take and then identify that and then say that okay this is no compromise you have to do you have to finish on this and then get into this so like this you need to go each and every stage of process that you have to say that okay which one can be done which one cannot be done. it's a wonderful zero based opportunity that we have before us and then try to challenge those conventional wisdom why why you are not doing that earlier in it we used to you know if someone has to work from home we need to get a permission from this right now we have put a reverse way saying if you have to work from office you have to go and then ask me approval and then say that why oh, you need to work from office and then it it is a lot of lot of what i would say that reality in the place like mumbai that we are talking about think of a scenario how a real estate can can redefine its own self and then how we can really look at that space management in much more better way and how we can have my own distributed reurbanization i've written a topic on this reurbanization is happening on this so reverse urbanization is going on people are moving going from city to uh, they are also going back to you know their own uh, x y is that place which is near to their hometown where connectivity is not a challenge today those type of things are happening that is why so many things are moving around we really don't know what are all the stuff all we need to is identify those blocks and then try to address on this absolutely i think uh, one of the points that raj also made was uh, about retraining uh, the culture and you know trying to retransform the culture of the organization if i remember right you know uh, most of the luxury car owners have this option of uh, a proximity sensor which the car comes with but when you're driving in india you have to switch it off because the way drivers drive cars in india you can't really work like that similarly you know if you put a sensor in someone's pocket and make sure that you know they are not in close proximity eventually they'll do something to make sure it's not beeping because that's how we are used to so uh, how do you really manage to make sure that people are maintaining uh, social distancing and what kind of cultural differences uh, cultural changes do you think would be required mr balaji yeah there is no shortcut here yeah when it comes to the training it's a fundamental thing you need to make that and you have to make some responsible person have some stringent laws if someone is really violating you need to take some stubborn actions and then those type of things are really required i have seen those type of things even happening in case of refinery and the chemical plants wherein if people are violating that first time second time third time exit okay that can be one of the reason for him to get sacked on this the moment you are you know giving those type of fundamental process in place, and then people will will start listening to you right that's that's one thing you have to make the people understand the language they understand that is point number 1 while threat is not solution to all the problem but when it comes to the law when it comes to the safety when it comes to the whether he is spoiling himself is one portion he may he may spoil the entire ecosystem that is not the good thing to happen so that is a you know fundamental process when it comes to this and there is a learning curve there are people who may not know this right so that's where that is where you know people have to really go through this today we can look at that okay how this can be simulated in a virtual environment how a virtual training can be given what are all the ways make the people to go through that rigorous training and then do a testing on this whole process to make those you know uh, rigorous training through that virtual reality and then try to address that particular stuff is is a technological possibility and make it must for them want to go for once in a quarter or if someone is violating ask them to go for test one make the people to understand okay till they correct themselves they will never be in a position to go through it's a no rocket science but still it works every time is is the systematic way of solving it i don't think there is any way of you know resolving and taking a shortcuts and cutting the corner on this is going to solve the problem rather it will it will create and aggravate the problem further right rather i would say that okay having said that can i look at those processes which can be looked at from remote which can be executed from remote which can be addressed from remote so those type of things we need to you know say
segregate and bifurcate and then make the people okay which cannot be you have to leave with that give them training go with virtual reality go on many other means of training safety is and and there is no you know compromise on that particular so when it comes to the other areas okay the area is opening up right what we thought it it was not possible yesterday is now it's becoming possible on this right so for example we never thought that we will have our own distributed discussions in in the form of seminars that we will be looking at our uh, field trial to our product uh, people uh, you no know, technological means these are all the thing which is not thought of though it is technologically possible even before it has not been thought of and that's why that we have we have always been now it is it is more a necessity and it is giving us an opportunity we need to also look at okay how we can address this and taking on this for that's what i thought we should we should say that and when it comes to the safety and security i think it's it's no compromise zone we need to we need to live with that and then and then do what is required to be done because there is no point in discussing that particular thing right so it is it is mandatory now there are some you know sophisticated means of training there are some sophisticated ways of addressing it there are some sophisticated ways of catch holding of those deviations that's fine but the you know the golden rule works and it works every time so which we need to adapt to that that's how that i thought i should share this here that's excellent i mean is the easier option to actually identify areas where you know you don't really need people physically present at uh, uh, the shop floor rather than worrying uh, more about you know how to keep them apart uh, you pointed out uh, towards security being an important aspect of uh, managing these operations now uh, one of the things is that security can be looked at as an, as an enabler or as bottleneck towards deploying a lot of these technologies so uh, how do you make sure that you know you're able to communicate remotely you're able to handle a lot of proce- processes remotely but at the same time everything is done in a secure manner yeah i think it's it's important and it's important for every uh, professionals like us to you know go through this and uh, um, it is actually not important it's vital it's it's very very important and we all know that hackers are working over time and uh, working from home means you know think of a situation wherein you are working connecting from your home which is not that much right typically the wifi at house is not that much there but you are connecting from your to your office so which means that there is every possibility that they can get into your office in much more better way so you need to strengthen the endpoint in such a way that that you know you are adequately not allowing those those uh, penetrators to come on board um i don't think any professional can claim that oh i am 100% secured in this current day context right so what is even even i don't think nasa can claim that in that particular manner right what is what is important is we need to have our weight analysis vital essential and desirable right you cannot put all all your uh, cases in all the one plus what is vital for you which one is is no compromise zone right put put all your effort and then make that as 100 more security on this then then identify those essential categories yes it is important but lesser than vital on this whole process and then and then build a model around that for this essential side of it then you are talking about the desirable side right yes it is also equally important no one wants to be screwed on the desirable side also but it is okay to get into this because because you cannot go in focusing on all the places across all the globes and then try to do while you can claim that okay that i have done and then i am a superman on this whole process in reality that is not happening and we need to also ensure that is why you need to have to have your organizational thing and have a conversations and see to that that okay what is vital and what is essential and what is desirable and then try to build your own you know security strategy and then try to get this now this opens up an altogether opens up an altogether there are different situations wherein the people the distributed environment is coming up right when there is a distributed environment whatever may be the technological tool the security tool that that you have been going on adding and putting there is a need for redefining your entire architecture right how you are going to redefine your en- entire architecture how this extended home is going to be in, in the new uh, that we are going to be there that's how the organization should look at what is the architecture that you are finalizing probably that will also redefine your products which are all the products that you are going to go how this is going to be aligned in overall you know technological framework that we are talking about proceed which one should come later how you are going to go about what is your mechanism what is what is the trade off between cost versus 
uh, the security, right? There is also, you cannot go on say that I will go on increasing the cost of security. So there is also a trade-off as a CAO that I need to also look at. So all these things put together, you will form a strategy and then try to identify that and get that, okay, this is what your fundamental uh, framework and within which you need to look at. And this is how the extended enterprise is going to connect. And these are all the ways and means that you are going to allow. And these are all your weight analysis of sy systems and processes. And this is the tools, techniques, and methods that we are going to go about. This you will go with twin level or three level security. This is two level security, one level security. This is how that we are talking about those type of, you know, fine prints that you need to work towards it and also continuously monitor, right? So when there is a political situation changes, then you also see a huge hackers are coming up and they now, now it is no more, a, you know, a traditional uh, warfare. It is the cyber warfare is really coming up and then people are really looking at. So what is your, how do we protect yourself from things? How do we lay low and still enabling that? While at one end you need to enable, at the other end you need to protect, right? So this is this is the you know, typical challenge that you need to really go through that. And it is no one uh, fit size fits for all. And also it varies in the industry. There are traditionally, you know, banking industry and and uh, you know uh, telco industries are considered as and 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 then finance. Those those type of things are considered as that now. Manufacturing is 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 the one that we are really getting into it in the COVID times. Those type of situations are really emerging very very strong on this. We need to finalize and fix those blocks and continuously monitor those blocks and try to take those you know swift actions. And how do we minimize those type of things? What is your mechanism? What is your combat mechanism? Is also equally important. Training is important. There will be one person in your own thing will will click on wrong. Uh, uh, link and then you are you are doomed. So, you know those those type of things. There is an awareness. There is a need for so many things which has to happen. So it's it's a combination of so many other things we need to put together. And this extended enterprise opens up altogether different Pandora box, which we need to really work towards and see together that how we are how we are addressing on that. Yeah. Absolutely. Raj, what is uh, your view on you know, fixing these security related challenges when it comes to you know working remotely? Okay, for security, I'm going to be extremely, uh, you know, open. You know, security is a topic, uh, you know, I, I go back to also uh, what Mr. Balaji mentioned. Security is a topic that more you know, it's paradoxical, okay? So the more you know, the less you know. If you go and talk to a CIO who says that I have done security, you typically see that they have only implemented one firewall and they think they are done with security. On the other hand, uh, somebody who has an elaborate security architecture, they would say that, you know, guys, I do, do not really know how secure I am. Because the more you know about security, you'd see that how complex it is. And the goalpost in security actually changes, you know, every second, not even every day or every month, every second the goalpost changes. Because, uh, you know, today security hackers, hacking is a professional activity, right? You can actually get your degree, uh, be the best in the in the class and then go and join a hacking group because, you know, they are paid extremely well and you don't even have to pay taxes. So it's it's a double whammy from us uh, and it's a good thing for them because, you know, they, they can be somebody who doesn't do anything during the day, but uh, they'd be, a, you know, a millionaire because, uh, you know, they'd be earning in bitcoins. Uh, and, and, and here is where, you know, uh, you know, the other thing that I always talk about is that there are three S's where you should not spend less on. One is submarine, second is surgery, and third is security. Uh, you know, if you spend less on either of these three, uh, you are actually calling for a lot of trouble, right? If you, if you spend less on surgery, whether you open your eyes on Mother Earth or some other, other place, I don't know. Uh, you know, submit in the same case, and security is also the same. You know, uh, you know, if if you spend less to, tomorrow, you don't know what's going to happen. So the, uh, the only thing that I see back from our customers is that, uh, you know, the knowledgeable ones actually say, "What else can I do?" Uh, and the not so knowledgeable ones don't want to talk to us. So we engage with the knowledgeable ones to learn more, also because you know, for example, Mr. Balaji will have. Uh, a real example of what's happening in his, uh, you know, area, right? What is his employees telling him about? What kind of threats he is seeing all the time? And he has quite a, 
you know uh, elaborate security architecture and that's what we learn from also so that's that's what we see from uh, you know our cio friends per se yeah and also this this particular area is you know um, changing every day right and he, he put it he put it very right when i say changing new new players and new new technologies and new new orientations and combat mechanisms so all these things are changing like the way i talked about the moving crowd here security is also a moving world right it's a, it's also it's a, there is there is there is a lot of lot of things are changing on there you need to be mindful okay from so we talked about the knowns and the unknowns and even in security it's more about the unknowns than what we know and yeah. with that uh, yes. running short of time uh, i would just like to take one quick question on a lighter note just want to get a view from both of you on what would you really miss uh, in the future of work uh, the light banter with a cup of hot steaming coffee sitting in front of mr balaji and listening to his jokes that we have to enjoy if, if you ask me honestly i don't miss anything right and uh, i said technology is i am virtually connecting to the people but human emotion is something that you always want to be near to some people right so here is here is the type of situation where some of my uh, uh, employees relatives are expired i would have reached out them i would have reached out that particular thing and then be that particular side and uh, work wise i don't see any um, difference and in fact i i'm enjoying what i'm really doing in the current day context but that the human emotions when it comes to the human emotions when you are want to really talk to someone who is who is in that particular distress you don't want to know talk from distance and then try to see this that's something which is what i'm missing to that extent and organizationally i am the person who always move away with various team members and various customers internal customers etc so those those clients what i'm missing but uh, professionally i don't think we are we are missing anything on this whole process right so it is that the personal side that the emotional connect side is what is what really missing you cannot do a you know distancing and then try to do this you know it it does not work in that context especially when when we are really looking at otherwise i i have no regrets on this in fact post covid if someone tells me to come to office i'll ask them why <laughs> <laughs> so that's an interesting point as you know organizations look at working remotely Uh, this is one important aspect that we can't really ignore that there is uh, an innate need to connect that people have and that human connection needs to be there uh, how you uh, ensure that uh, that it's brought together it's up to you it depends on organization it depends on the sectors uh, but these small little aspects of uh, working that you know will really define how successful or how great your workplace would be in the future So with that, we would wrap the session. Thank you so much, Mr. Balaji and Raj, for joining us. Thanks all our uh, attendees uh, who've been watching us keenly. Uh, you can actually watch a rerun of this show within the 20, next 24 hours. We'll have the recording put up in case you've missed up missed anything. And just stay connected for more such sessions and stay safe. Thank you. Yeah, stay Thanks, safe. Thanks, Thanks, Mr. Balaji. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Raj. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching.